Let's talk about the features of Big Picture Enterprise. Honestly, it's a little bit annoying that there is no good summary of that. There is just a list of features on a web page and a wiki inside the Big Picture documentation. But even for me, someone who is totally immersed in the world of Big Picture, some of those points are not exactly clear and I have to dig around and do some testing before I am sure what the authors actually had in mind. So, I'm going to record this video and we're going to publish it in our advanced Big Picture course, but also we're going to put it on our YouTube channel for everyone to see, because I think that this part is actually very important when you have to make a decision whether you want to go just with Big Picture or with Big Picture Enterprise plus Standard Big Picture. From the cost perspective, it's a big decision sometimes because you basically double the cost of Big Picture while adding Big Picture Enterprise to the bundle. Therefore, you should be completely aware of what you are choosing and my goal in this video is to make you as well informed as possible so that you can make the best decision for yourself. All right, so starting with the first feature that we have over here, it's all about creating new boxes and new box types. So in Big Picture Enterprise, you are allowed to create new box types. Now in standard Big Picture without the Enterprise, you can see that this one is disabled and I am not able to do it but I still have many boxes that I can already use and that's something that has been added to Big Picture 8.5 so previously we only had program, program increment and iteration now you have many more pre-configured box types that you can use this is very very big because previously with just three box types it was a lot harder to capture everything inside a company, even a medium-sized company, not even talking about large-sized company. Now, even without the Big Picture Enterprise, well, you cannot create new box types, but you can completely modify the existing ones and you have like, what, 10, 12, 11 to choose from, right? So that's already quite a lot. And if you go inside, you can see that all of the things in here are basically customizable apart from, I think, only one element. So modules over here, you can't rename the modules. This is still a feature of Big Picture Enterprise. So if you want the guns to be named something else, you won't be able to do it. You can only do it with Big Picture Enterprise. But all the other features, like the most important ones, like scope definition, task scheduling, quick filters, everything is here. So it's not really a big deal, even if you don't have Big Picture Enterprise in terms of the boxes nowadays. So just one month ago, I was talking with one of the biggest telecoms in, in Poland, and I told them that they should definitely get Big Picture Enterprise. Now I'm not so sure, so, um, so we will see where it takes us. So that's the first feature. Second feature of Big Picture Enterprise is connected with alternative scenarios or what if scenarios. I call them differently because people are using also different names. They are basically located over here in the Gantt chart, but also in the uh, resources module, which is not on the list over here, uh, but you will have it over here and you can work with life scenario or an alternative scenario. And if you have Big Picture Enterprise, you can create multiple alternative scenarios. Without Big Picture Enterprise, you can only have one alternative scenario. So that's a difference between um, Enterprise and, and no Enterprise. Do you need to have more than one alternative scenarios? Well, it depends how often you test different theories regarding your project plan and how often you want to see how your project plan would look like if something happened. Um, for, for me personally and the customers I've been working with, I kind of feel that having one is usually enough and you can work around that or work with that. Uh, so I think it's like a personal decision on your side, depending on how you are working with your project plan designs and development. All right, next two features I'm going to show you inside the resources module. So one of them is workload contouring. Workload contouring, if you click on the task, workload contouring is available usually at the bottom. And yeah, that's this section. And you, can, you have four settings over here for workload contouring. And the last one, the manual one, is not available without Big Picture Enterprise. And this one is, again, depending on how you work with resources, might be very important to you and might not be important at all to you. So the manual mode, 
basically allows you to manually decide how the loadout of work that is assigned to this task or this task estimated on the level of this task is distributed through the duration of time, right? So our duration of time for this task is five working days. So we have those days over here. We previously have been working with the flat distribution, so the equal number of hours for every single day. But now with the manual distribution, I can say, okay, on Monday, we're going to spend just one hour working on this task. On Tuesday, we're going to spend eight hours working on this task. On Wednesday, again, eight hours. On Thursday, I only have half a day to spend on this task, or someone who is assigned to this task has only half a day, so four hours. And on Friday, I will spend, again, eight hours full day working on this task, right? So you can do this manual distribution of hours with the manual workload contouring. Without it, it's not possible. And without Big Picture Enterprise, you cannot switch to manual workload contouring. So if that sounds like something you need to have, then again, Big Picture Enterprise is a must. Another thing that I want to demonstrate over here, since we are in the resources module, is something that is one of my favorite features of Big Picture Enterprise. It works for both individuals and the teams. I'm going to show it on the Teams view because I have a better example over here, but it is also available here. What I'm talking about is Show Overall Assignment. This button will be, or actually checkbox, will be grayed out if you don't have Big Picture Enterprise. You will only be able to use it with Big Picture Enterprise. And this basically brings in the information regarding all the resources you have over here, being individuals or teams in the team view, uh, from all the other boxes. So what does it give you? If you're working with, for example, the team planning, and these teams are working on several different projects, then you uh, will be able to create like a global overview of the full team's uh, availability. If you're working with individual resources that, for example, and dip their toes in several different projects at the same time, then looking at the resource from the perspective of one project might be a little bit misleading. So you want to have a global look at your resources. So let's have a look at our, at our global team over here. I can see that the global team has a task assigned over here. It, it contributes 6.4 hours per day and the capacity of my team is 16 hours per day. So it looks all good, right? But if I turn on the show overall assignment, then an additional task for this time period will be brought to the picture. It's from a different project uh, and suddenly my team is full, right? 16 hours out of 16 hours. And even though previously I thought that maybe I can add more work for my team within the time period, now I can see that it's not really the case because that the team is doing something else on another project. So this is what Big Picture Enterprise can give you this tiny little button over here, but hugely valuable. Is there a work around it? Yes, it, it, there kind of is. It's less, let's say, easy to use, but you can always create a huge box on top of your box structure that encapsulates everything else. You can put there all the scope of all the smaller boxes, so all, all your projects, for example, and create kind of like a portfolio view, and then come over here and you will be able to see the full uh, aggregation, but then it, for example, will not be easily accessible to the project manager that is sitting in a smaller box, in the project box, for example, over here, and uh, he or she wants to check how the planning is doing. You will have to actually switch the big, big box. Over there, there is a lot of data, so it's going to be probably significantly slower than this box over here. So it, it is a little bit of a drag, it's still doable though. So if you're tight on money, I think that it's still doable without Big Picture Enterprise. But having said that, this is one of the coolest features of Big Picture Enterprise. Next feature, the reports module. Well, the, the goal of this module is to bring you all the important information regarding what's happening with your boxes, with your projects. And without Big Picture Enterprise, you will have a limited access to those reports. So currently, you can see that here my Big Picture Enterprise is disabled and I don't have access to those four reports. I can use risk matrix and team dependencies to its full uh, extent, but for the task report, it's also limited because even though I can create a task report uh, for me, with uh, Big Picture Enterprise disabled, I'm not sure why it's shown over here, but with Big Picture Enterprise disabled, 
not available, you will only have one grouping option. So you won't be able to create three levels of grouping. And when you have three levels of grouping, it allows you to drill into the report uh, so that you can create uh, one grouping level, second grouping level, third grouping level, and you can drill into the data to all of those levels uh, to the very bottom. So without Big, Big Picture Enterprise, you will have just one level of the report in the task report. And the remaining features of Big Picture Enterprise are kind of configuration based really. So if you go to the app configuration, it's here in advanced really, or you can go straight to integrations like that. Then you get to integrate your Jira instance of Big Picture with other Big Picture or Jira instances also holding the data that you want to work with. That is a brand new thing that has been added now with uh, 8.5. As you see, for my server instance, it's not available here yet, but for my cloud instance, I can connect a second Jira cloud instance and bring the data in. So that is also the feature that is only available to Big Picture Enterprise. And that makes total sense to me because those users that will have to do that or will want to do that, I know you are in big companies because you have to have several Jira instances spread somewhere around the world to, to be wanting to do that. Another thing that is available here in terms of integrations is an integration with Tempo. So you can connect your big picture with Tempo and you can synchronize. If you do the automatic synchronization, you can choose what kind of data you want to synchronize. And then this data will be coming from Tempo. And for example, if you, if you import skills from your Tempo instance, they will have a marker that they are coming from Tempo. So you will be able to recognize them. And then Tempo will be the main source of data, really. So even if you modify them, but later on synchronize with Tempo again, it will get overwritten. So this is something to definitely remember. I think maybe one last interesting aspect of the big picture enterprise is on the cloud version. You can also choose the location of your server. So for example, this might be important for companies that are based in Europe, you might want your data to be stored in a central Europe, European server, not in the US as for example I have here right now because of GDPR, right? So this might be important. Uh, there is also a mention in the documentation of enterprise features that you can customize the look and feel of the menu in the server and data center instances. I remember it was here in the previous versions, I can't find it now, so I highly suspect that it's actually not updated in the Big Picture Enterprise features because I can't find it in a tool anymore, even on my server instance available over there. I spent like half an hour searching for it. I checked the documentation, can't find it. So apparently it's not here anymore, right? So this is the end of all the features of Big Picture Enterprise, uh, basically. And now the big question is, is it worth it? And the answer to that question is, of course, it depends on what you need, what you're looking for. I would say that if some of the features of Big Picture Enterprise sounded interesting to you and you have the budget to cover the Big Picture Enterprise costs, you should highly consider it. Why? Because when you're introducing the tool, and we help companies in this process quite a lot, we are basically driven by two main things to train people how to use the tool and set it up properly, but also to boost the adoption, right? So we don't want to leave them with the configuration that is, for example, complicated. We want to leave them with something that is easy to use. And we engaged in multiple actions that are aimed towards boosting the adoption. And I think that having the tool that is simpler to use, and I think that with some of those big picture enterprise features, it might be simpler to explore some of the use cases uh, than with the workarounds that are available without Big Picture Enterprise. It will help people to feel more comfortable working with the tool, therefore boosting the tool's adoption, which our experience shows that it's, this is one of the most important metrics because if you introduce a new tool, uh, there will always be some traction between the tool and the users. And if you make the tool as easy as possible and people will be happy using it, then it will be a success. If not, then people will be struggling and complaining all the time about the new tool compared to the old one, which was such a great tool to have, right? You know what I mean. So, of course, if you will be looking uh, for any kind of help in big picture implementation, we are here for you. You can always reach out to us 
and uh, ask even for a meeting uh, without any strings attached and just talk about it. We will tell you what we do during the implementation and uh, what we recommend you to follow. You can then hire us to help you with it or you can do it by yourself. Uh, it's totally okay if you uh, want to do it by yourself. We understand that not, not everybody has a budget to hire an external company to help them. But at the same time, if you want to use our broad experience and many years of working with big picture customers from all around the world, you know where to find us. This video that you've just watched is part of our full big picture video training course that is available as one of our services. We've also decided to put this video on our free YouTube channel because we think that making the right decision in terms of whether you should or shouldn't buy Big Picture Enterprise is very important, not only in terms of the finances of your company, but also in terms of the usability and the adoption of the tool. So hopefully you got all the important information out of that. At this moment in time, I also want to mention that if you want to take a look at our free big picture course that is about three hours long, also with um, access to our video platform, then all the important links will be in the description of this video, of course. And if you also want to maybe go straight to our premium video course for big picture, then you will find the link in the description and also on our website. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. Cheers.